I'm pretty chilled in what I do. I very rarely, very, very rarely have moments of like, oh, am I doing enough? Like, I really don't. I really, eh. like, I'm pretty confident. And I've watched videos where you people are like, come into my homeschool room tour. And mine is literally a basket. One small basket. So, intro. Hello, my name is Sinead. I am a second generation homeschooler. I'm currently homeschooling three of my five children. And today I want to talk about what I use to homeschool my children minimally. I have one small homeschool basket. It's all I use every day and it's all my kids need. And I'm going to take you through exactly what I use and why I use it. I am a minimalist homeschooler, very minimal, and I have posted one other video, which I will link down below, which is all about why I minimalist homeschool and, and the mindset, which I think are really helpful towards homeschooling in general. So if you haven't watched that video, um, I do suggest that you watch that. Because in this video, I intend to show you what I use, but I really think that the mindsets and knowing why you're doing what you're doing and why you're going minimal is pretty important. So if you haven't watched that, watch this one, then watch that one. So I'll give you some context of who I teach and the age groups involved. Um, I'm currently teaching my three eldest boys. They are from the ages of five to 10. And the three things that I focus on, which I did mention in my last video, is reading, language, and mathematics. The so for reading, I um, teach to read. Obviously, you're teaching from the basic standards of, you know, ABCs, phonetics, and moving on. I will not increase their workload until they are competent readers, which to me means that they can read to analyze information and that they can also competently pass on what they learn, whether it's through written um, word or orally. So reading, what I use to teach reading is the McGuffey Readers. McGuffey Reading Series and the whole readers in the series are seriously old school. If you've read the Little House on the Prairie books, that is what they're learning from. And I have the complete original versions, um, unabridged and exactly what they used back like 200 years ago. And the reason why I use these is because they are easy to use. They come with a whole um, set that works together. So this one here is the one that my year three um, grader is on. So he's on the first reader. Now re teaching him to read was definitely, it was a trial. It was, it was not easy. It was being the first child that I taught to read I can see the mistakes that I made at first and that was that I wasn't consistent enough in the early days with just teaching the same concept over and over again until it was mastered. I was trying to be fun and engaging and I was trying to keep it, you know, unboring and trying to make my school feel good for a young child that I pretty much made our first year of reading almost non, I would say like non-viable really to count as a reading year because I just wasn't consistent. You need to take the same steps and just teach them over and over again. And that is what McGuffey's is really good at. And that is why I do recommend using the McGuffey series if you haven't taught to read before. I'm a person who hasn't taught children how to read. I haven't been doing this for 20 years. And so what I love about it is that it takes such simplicity and ease. It even comes with an instruction manual, which I do call upon. So this is for the, this is the teacher's manual and it just helps you know the progression, what to do. And you don't have to follow it. And I haven't followed it you know, to a T, but when I was first starting off and you're sort of opening these books and you've got this child who can't read and you're wondering, well, what, what am I going to do? Well, this is going to help you go, okay, we're going to open this book and we're going to start these flashcards and you're going to move on. And that's exactly what I did. And it just gave me the confidence and it gave him the confidence because once he mastered those first few little concepts, he became confident. And that was what was lacking in our first year because he wasn't able to master things because I wasn't being consistent 
he didn't feel very confident in what he was taking on. And so it was just this whole snowball effect. So even though they're old school and they're maybe boring and there's no colorful fun pictures and they can be repetitive and you might be stuck on the same flashcards for a long time if your child is not mastering them, you just gotta stick with it because consistency is key and with mastering concepts comes confidence in the child. And once you have a confident child, you'll actually start to move a lot quicker. It's crazy how their confidence can boost their own learning. So McGuffey's readers, I definitely recommend them and they have readers right through from the primer, which is what your pre-K and your level one reader will start at. And they have readers going right through to pretty much the end of primary before you pick up the primer in the McGuffey series. You first want to master every letter in the alphabet, which is what we're doing. These flashcards are usually filthy and taped on the wall somewhere because there's always a kid learning them in my house. So the great thing about these flashcards is on the back for the teacher, they have a list of the sounds that that makes. For example, A makes three sounds. So I'll hold up the letter A and I'll hold up three fingers. Okay, remember it makes A, A and R. This is the sounds and I do have these. Um, these sounds ones are from every single sound in the English language and the flashcards I will link below. They are part of the McGuffey series but they don't come with the set. Um, but they definitely work together, like you're supposed to have the flashcards with the set. Um, so, next one. So, I have added the Handwriting Without Tears series to all my children, from my pre-K to my level three. Um, I'm trying to find the writing here. So, they're all doing it because I found I was using the Good and the Beautiful before, and I was using those for their writing. So, it's essentially trace A, trace B, trace C, trace your name, like just basic writing skills, but I did find that especially that my boys, pretty much all of them, were really struggling with writing. It's just a chore to do writing because it was me correcting every single thing with no, you don't start there, you start there, and this has a tail, and that, you know, like just these constant um, restructuring their writing. And I was just thought, this year I'm gonna try and change that up. So this year we are doing the Handwriting Without Tears series. So this comes from the Learning Without Tears series. They have maths and they have a few different things. They also have a Building Writer series, which my level three, my 10 year old is doing. Um, the Handwriting series, now I've only been using it this year. I can attest that already there has been a huge improvement in my boys writing, in all of their writing. My 10 year old is doing the cursive book. So something that he was quite afraid to start. Um, but he's really enjoying it and he's really good at it. And for me, a pro is that he's learning the correct method. He is got great letter formation and I don't have to teach him. The next thing in my homeschool basket, which does get done at least once a week, is the Building Writers series. So the Building Writers series is just something that we have started with my 10 year old, not with the younger ones. The reason why I wanted to incorporate a language and a writing and a narrative writing based curriculum is because it really falls into my three categories, which is writing, language, and mathematics. And I really wanted to him to be able to write. Just like I said with I'm creating a competent reader, I want that competent reader to be able to pass that information on orally and with narration. I think that's really important. To be able to write properly is a skill that is I think dying out and um, I think and what I hope is going to happen with these books is that he is going to grow into being able to understand the way a sentence is made and how to write properly naturally it's not going to be something that he feels he has to force into his writing he's going to realize that he's learned to write that way so I think that Building Writers series is definitely something I'm going to continue for this year. And I suppose next year, if I do another one of these videos, I can tell you whether I'll be buying it again. The next thing in my homeschool basket is Matthew C. Matthew C is a, if you haven't heard of it, is a math system 
for every single year from pre-K to the end of high school. So I have been using Matthew C since I started homeschooling. So four years, three years, three, four years around about that. And I really like it. I will never change off Matthew C. Um, Matthew C starts at Primer, which is your pre-K age group. And it is super simple. It's things like count the circles, count the triangles, but it will quickly move into um, helping them recognize a number like 53 and what it's made of. It's made of a tens and ones. Then it'll take you into hundreds. They learn the place value in a fun way with colors and with blocks and not with numbers. Because I think asking a five-year-old or a six-year-old or whenever you're starting pre-K, a seven-year-old, um, to just open a book of numbers and understand numbers only in a numbers format um, is really hard to do. Um, oh, the next thing in my book is, ah, now this I do recommend if you are a new homeschooler, primary language lessons. It has, what does it have? That's a bonus lesson. It has 164 lessons. And each lesson can be done in like a day. So it's something that you open and just do that day. Um, it doesn't have to be done chronologically. It doesn't have to be done at a certain age, at a certain time. This is a book that you can have. If it's a Wednesday, I will open up a lesson from this book and we'll just read it. It has things like observation lessons. So what color grass is, gold is, salt is so this is things that a very young child can do it also has things that an older child can do for example an answer to a note of invitation would you write an answer to a note of invitation if you received one um, it has lessons like what's the difference between a sentence a statement and a question so at the start of the book you can work with your pre-k at the end of the book you could work with your grade three or four. And that's what I really like about it. It's one little book that sits in my basket, gets pulled out whenever I wanna do it, is always useful. It will never get outdated. It will never outgrow my children as I keep introducing new children to the homeschool table. And it will definitely never leave my homeschool basket. Next book, which this book, I'm pretty sure I stole it from my mother is what your kindergartner needs to know. And I love this book because it takes you through what your kindergartner needs to know. And sometimes as a teacher, um, you know, I still obviously keep my homeschooling super minimal for my pre-K, like my five-year-old sits down and does his maths and his writing and he listens to the read aloud. That's it, that's his school. Um, but just sometimes too, I'll be like, hey, put your maths away. Let's get this book out. And it's filled with stories. Um, it's filled, it's a bit American because it's based in America. So for example, it will take you through the history of Columbus and stuff, which is not a problem. You know, for us, it's Captain Cook. So, but he still learns about Columbus. He likes it. Different, and you can do different activities like fast and slow, high and low, and let's go and collect things that are alike or, um, yeah, it's just one of those books. It's kind of like primary language lessons because it just gives you this little tool of, you know, if you're running out of things to do or if you don't even want to do any formal schooling at all, but you just want to have this and you can even just read the poems for language skills if you just want to read the stories and just use it as one big read aloud with the occasional activity, then your kindergartner is still going to know everything that you think a kindergartner should know by that time. So yes, another book in my basket, which I really enjoy. Thank you, mum. Read alouds are extremely important. Read alouds are gonna get your language skills, grammar skills, knowledge, and the ability to, even just the ability for young kids to sit and listen is a skill that is taught. Read alouds can serve in your minimal homeschooling agenda. They can serve to fill the gaps if you feel that there are gaps in their extracurricular work. So my read allows go vary from storybooks to um, a science book. Like it could be a science textbook for young children and 
they don't know if we're if i'm calling it a read aloud and they're all gathered on the couch listening to me read they're simply going to listen to the information and so currently in my basket of read alouds is we're reading about human anatomy which the children are finding very interesting and it's a really good way just to sort of branch out from the you know the, the things that can get tedious of so doing the same things over and over again um, we also have a planetarium one, which they're not as interested in, but I would like to read through this year. And we have the story of the world. This is actually the second time I'm reading this book because the first time I read it, the children were very young. You can tell in my read aloud basket is not anything that I would call twaddle. It's not anything that for me is a waste of my time. I will never read anything that I feel is a waste of my time. Inside my school time, I will read what I know is going to increase my children's knowledge, even if it's not information based, but even if it's more catching language based or trying to remember a poem or something like that, something that's gonna help them. I hope that I explained well enough what I use and why I use it. And so hopefully I can end this video. I hope that I explained well enough what I use and why I use it. And hopefully, definitely this time I will have a video next week. I'm pretty sure I'm going to do a video next week on my quiet time routine. I have a blog post on my quiet time and I'm a huge believer in quiet time. And if you don't know what quiet time is, then hit the subscribe button and come back next week because I'm gonna tell you all about quiet time. And if you're a family with children of any age, and especially if you're a homeschooling family, which I'm guessing you are if you're here, then you're gonna to wanna to know what quiet time is and I really do suggest having quiet time because it's the best. If I didn't have quiet time, then I wouldn't be making this video because this video is nice and quiet because it's quiet time. So until then, I'll see you next week. Bye.